There's nothing wrong with taking a slight risk now and again. Just this morning, my gummy multivitamin fell on the floor in the kitchen. I picked it up and ate that bad boy, you know, because vitamin's gonna kill those germs. <laughs> but you never wanna take too much of a risk. Had that vitamin dropped on the floor directly below a public urinal, yeah, I'm gonna ignore that bad boy went down there and just go about my business. But don't ask why would I ever have gummy multivitamins in a public restroom, all right? It's like a metaphor or an analogy or something. So today we're talking about risk and we have a few wide receivers here in 2023 that have plenty of it. But don't forget, if you wanna limit the amount of risk you take in fantasy football because you wanna walk away with championships, now is your time. Our draft guide is available for pre-order right now, thefantasyheadliners.com. Links down below in the description for $21.99. We got you covered from July 1st to the kickoff of the NFL season. Live updates all off season long to make sure you have the most up-to-date information to draft a banger of a team to dominate in 2023. Maybe you want yours for free. We are still running the promotion with our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Sign up for a new account at Underdog. Use referral code HEADLINERS. Once you make that initial minimum $10 deposit, we'll match your deposit and get you a free draft guide as well. So don't miss out on this opportunity. But now let's talk about some wide receivers that have some risk here in 2023. And we'll kick it off with one of the best wide receivers in all of football. It's Devontae Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders, currently sitting at wide receiver seven overall, and he's going to be our highest ranked wide receiver that we talk about in this video here today as a projected second round pick. Now, this may be a shocker to some of you that I'm going to include Devontae Adams in a risky video, but this isn't the same old story for Devontae Adams here in 2023. He's no longer playing with all-time great quarterback Aaron Rodgers. He's no longer playing with longtime BFF and college quarterback Derek Carr either. I mean, heck, at this point, we don't even know who's going to be throwing him the ball in Las Vegas. There is a clause in the contract of Jimmy G that says if he can't pass a physical by the start of the season, they can cut him with no penalties to the team. Now, don't forget that Jimmy G suffered a pretty serious injury last December. He then opted to not have surgery right away. In fact, he didn't have surgery until after he signed with the Raiders. Now, the next quarterback up on the depth chart currently, Brian Hoyer. And there's rumors circulating that they could also bring in Carson Wentz if they so choose. But this just keeps getting better and better because they also brought in Jacoby Myers from New England, tight end Austin Hooper from Tennessee, DeAndre Carter from the Chargers, and then they spent an early round draft pick on tight end Michael Mayer in the second. They also brought back Josh Jacobs for the year as well. Listen, just because Josh McDaniels is trying to form New England West Coast with the Island of Misfit Toys from the Patriots and Devontae Adams, it doesn't mean it's going to work. Jimmy G. Carson Wentz, does it really even matter? Neither of these guys are deep ball quarterbacks like Adams needs to really achieve that yearly high ceiling. Adams last season was number one among all wide receivers in air yards, number two in deep targets, but you can kiss that all goodbye. Las Vegas could turn out to be an absolute mess in a very difficult division. If you really risked it with Devontae Adams in round two, I really hope you didn't take a risk in round one. The last thing you want to do in fantasy football is pile up too much risk early in drafts because your season could be over before it even starts. How about, how about we head to what I'm going to refer to as a mini wide receiver dead zone? And the next three guys are all back to back to back in the current consensus rankings. And in my opinion, they have a ton of risk. What about DK Metcalf, currently wide receiver 15? In 2022, we saw DK go from crazy athletic deep threat to chain mover, right? We saw his volume increase, which was great, but he did a lot less with it, which is not great. He set a career high in targets and receptions, but also had a career low in touchdowns, yards per reception, and despite playing all 17 games, barely cracked a thousand yards receiving. Now, had nothing really changed from 22 to 23, at least we could kind of see what that role was going to be. But things did change. They changed in a big way. They drafted arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL draft in Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. So we went from big plays and touchdowns 
to big volume to now maybe a loss in that volume with another wide receiver in the mix now in Seattle, that only means there's less volume to go around to all of their other weapons. Don't forget they still have Tyler Lockett there as well. But if we lose volume to DK Metcalf and we don't have the big play touchdowns either, we're in a world of hurt with DK Metcalf. Let's also add to this that Seattle basically all but came out and said they still want to run the ball a lot and effectively here this year. They've shown that the last few years by drafting running backs in the second round. Kenneth Walker just last year, and then this year they went out and got themselves Zach Sh Arbonnet. So they want to run the ball again in Seattle. If I'm going to take a risk at this point of the draft where we have a DK Metcalf, I'm probably going to take it elsewhere, more than likely on a guy like a Jameer Gibbs or a Joe Mixon, maybe even an elite quarterback at that time as well. Will he have good weeks for sure? You know he's going to see a handful of big plays throughout the season, but I don't know if I want to ride this roller coaster every single week and be praying that he gets that big play because if he doesn't, He's probably going to hurt your fantasy team. But what about Amari Cooper, Cleveland Browns, currently sitting at wide receiver 16? And last year, Amari Cooper was a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy football, and I really don't think a whole lot of people know that. He outscored the likes of Devontae Smith and Christian Kirk and Jamar Chase. He ended the year tying a career high in targets as well, with 132 of them. The problem... He only turned that into 78 receptions for 1,160 yards and nine touchdowns. Not a bad season by any means, but you would expect maybe a higher reception total with that many targets. Fun fact, though, for as utilized as Amari Cooper has been over his career as a top wide receiver option on his teams, he's never had over 1,200 yards receiving in a season and has never scored double-digit touchdowns in a season as well, which is kind of crazy to think about. But here is the issue with Cooper this year, in my opinion. He's not the only show in town anymore, right? That and there's drops, 12 of them. It's like damn Devin Funchess reincarnated out here when we're talking about Amari Cooper in 2022. Anyway, the wide receiver to last year in Cleveland was Donovan Peoples-Jones. He had 96 targets, only turned it into 61 catches for 839 yards and three touchdowns. But we can't even say just that anymore. Now they've brought over Elijah Moore from the Jets. Love Elijah Moore. They also drafted wide receiver Cedric Tillman out of Tennessee. And I love myself some Cedric Tillman as well. The only reason Cooper finished where he did last year was because of huge volume. He needed that volume. Had he not gotten that amount of targets, he probably wasn't a top 10 option. He's probably closer to maybe a top 24 option at best. Now, Watson is going to have a full offseason to work out with his wide receiver group, which is something that he hasn't been able to do in a very long time. But honestly, I really like what the Browns have overall on offense as a whole this year. We have multiple high-quality wide receivers that we just mentioned, a big play tight end in David Njoku, a solid offensive line, a great running back in Sir Nicholas Chubb, an above average quarterback. This offense in Cleveland is really going to have a chance to be super balanced and effective in 2023. No longer just a run first type team like we've seen in years past with Chubb and Hunt. They're going to throw it a lot more. Now, a valid question could be, all right, maybe the volume decreases, Jake, but could we see an efficiency increase? Maybe he does more with what he does get. 112%? Yes, but that's where the risk comes in. It's really hard to be reliant on a wide receiver to have to get 130 plus targets with all the options that are available on his team. It's hard to count on a wide receiver to go out and get double digit touchdowns in a season, which is something he's never done before in his career. It's hard to trust a guy that's only had a catch rate above 70% one time over the last four seasons. I almost feel better at that point of the draft taking a stab on maybe DeAndre Hopkins. Hopefully he lands somewhere with a great role. Keenan Allen as well. Both of them are going after him in drafts right now over on underdog. And honestly, I feel a little bit better about taking those guys. It feels less dirty, if you know what I mean, for Amari Cooper. How about the next guy? We're going right down the list. It's Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers, currently sitting at wide receiver 17. And let me start off by saying this. I love the game of Debo Samuel when he's on the field. The problem is the guy's not always on the field. He's only started 66% of the games in his career. Only one time has he played in at least 16 games. And what year was that? 
Yep, his career year in 2021, where he had 1,770 yards and 14 total touchdowns. Also the same year, he had a career year in rushing production, right? 365 yards rushing and eight touchdowns on the ground. Well, that ain't happening anymore in San Francisco. That's why they have a Christian McCaffrey and an Elijah Mitchell in this backfield. At least it's not going to happen as often. They'll still utilize Debo at times, but maybe as much as we saw in 2021. Heck no. But the more you look into what Debo did in 2021, the more it just looks like an outlier year. A perfect storm of production. Take away that year, and this guy averages for his career four catches for 50 yards a game and one touchdown every 17 and a half touches. Well, that sucks because San Francisco was only giving him seven to eight touches a game last year. And over a course of a season, if he were to play all 17 games, you're looking at like eight touchdowns, which isn't bad at all. But outside of 2021, he averaged 12 yards per reception. In 2021, 18.2. Outside of 2021, he averaged about 10 yards per touch. In 2021, 13. Outside of 2021, he averaged right around 50 receiving yards per game. In 2021, 87.8. You can see how much these numbers are massively inflated for that one season and don't really correspond with the rest of his games over his career. Now, we don't know who the quarterback is going to be. If I had to guess, if Brock Purdy is 100% healthy come start of the season, he's got my vote to be the guy here this year. He took them too far last year. He showed what he could do last year, and for a contending team, he makes a lot of sense. But the rushing upside's not going to be there again this year for Debo like it was in 2021. A healthy George Kittle in the mix is going to take away some touchdowns. We definitely saw that at the end of last year. Brandon Ayuk. So many people don't talk about Brandon Ayuk, and he finished higher in almost every statistical category over Debo Samuel just last year. Here's the scary part in my opinion though. As we get closer to the season, I have a feeling his ADP is going to creep up for name value alone. Maybe some people who don't pay a lot of attention throughout the offseason or more of the casual fans will recognize the name. They'll draft him earlier. It'll push ADP up. It'll push him higher up draft rankings. And that could just be an absolute disaster for people. Even though I love the game of Debo Samuel, I'm not going to look at an entire career and base it off of just one season and continually overpay for it. But when you look at all the wide receivers here in 2023, are there any other names that you feel are pretty freaking risky? Put them down below in the comment section. Looking forward to seeing what you guys think here as well. But if you haven't done so already, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing if you're not already, because we're looking forward to winning all kinds of fantasy football championships in 2023. So do your part to make the world a better place. And we'll talk to you later.